All right, thank you so much. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. So my name is uh, Adeni uh, Samuel Adediron, as uh, introduced by Samson, and I'm the compact uh, coordinator. Uh, the presentation I'm going to give is about the livestock compacts. I speak, but the work has been done essentially by our partners and stakeholders, some of them have been invited to participate in this uh, presentation. Uh, specifically, I would appreciate the input of the African chicken's genetic gain and the input of uh, uh, some of the partners in Nigeria to this presentation. So the overview of the presentation is shown on this uh, slide. So I will talk about the compact, the technologies we are promoting the partners we've worked with, uh, target countries. I will speak very, very briefly about the technology outreach material that we developed in collaboration with FARA and AFAS. And then I will zero in on a particular, one small element of the poultry value chain that we believe uh, in addition to others as uh, business opportunities. And I will discuss the model in Nigeria and Ethiopia and uh, share some ideas about the mother, brood, mother brooder unit. Next slide, please. So in terms of the objective of the livestock uh, compact, essentially it is to promote the adoption and scaling of proven technologies in livestock uh, production, especially small livestock. We're looking at small ruminants, and poultry. We're looking at the entire value chain and we want to align with the SDG goals of <coughs> zero hunger, no poverty, good health and well-being, gender equality, sustainability and so on and so forth. And in respect of the webinar objectives, the developed mat outreach materials are to promote uh, adoption on proven technologies, looking at both technical and business aspects and what commercializing a livestock technology entail and also share beneficiary experience. Next slide. So this is an overview of the compact activities um, we work in about four countries. In other words, we have physical footprints in those countries, but we work in other countries where we have done capacity building and training. The technologies we have been promoting in the livestock compact includes uh, small ruminant production, essentially goods and sheep fattening, improved feed resources, a uh, high quality cassava peel smash as a alternative a feed and improved poultry genetics and distribution. We've conducted training for industry association. We've supported the, the training of in regional member countries, uh, the national agricultural services system. And we've also participated in some of the uh, AFDB country missions. So this slide shows our small ruminant value chain. For all the uh, commodities, for all the value chains, the challenges in many developing countries are mostly similar. In terms of technical challenge, we look at low productivity, low genetic merit of animals, poor access to veterinary services. And uh, in the other enabler compartments, we're looking at weak markets, unfavorable policy environments, lack of access to uh, financial services. So these challenges are fairly similar across the different value chains. For the small uh, ruminant value chain, we're promoting had improvement technologies through the community-based breeding program in Ethiopia. We're looking at uh, promoting youth entrepreneur for improved sheep fattening. 
you can see some of the youths in that picture and the fattening activities they have undertaken. You can also see some of the women participants uh, who have received uh, the first sheep after buying one of their own. But I will not be speaking very too much on this uh, uh, particular value chain. But suffice it to say that we engaged youth successfully in starting businesses in sheep fattening. We look at hard health and collective marketing. Next slide. Under the feed value chain, we look at different improved varieties of forages such as uh, Bracaria grass, Napier grass, oat veg, and some legume species. But we're also looking at high biomass yielding dual purpose uh, crops such as sorghum, millet, groundnut, cowpea, etc. I mentioned the high quality cassava peels mash before and we're also supporting uh, beneficiaries to acquire some skills in ration formulation. For the poultry value chain, we're looking at um, introducing improved dual purpose breeds of chicken for meat and egg production. The mother breeder unit, which I will be speaking more uh, extensively about and why we chose this particular component of the technology for commercialization. We're looking at improved flock health. Uh, we're also building extension training capacity through the development of the extension training material uh, in collaboration with FARA and AFAS. And we're looking at value addition, mechanized plucking. In terms of achievements of the compacts, I just put a few of the uh, achievements, what has been done so far. Uh, about 550,000 livestock farmers have been reached directly and also through media with proven technologies. About 33,000 small ruminants vaccinated against uh, uh, PPR disease. Uh, it's, it's like a, the small ruminants a plague. Uh, about 3,500 uh, 3, tons of dual purpose forage feeds were produced. Youth technical and business training and um, capacity in the management of poultry through mother brother units is what I'll be speaking more extensively about. I mentioned the youth sheep fattening in which we have uh, gotten about 500 youths to actually start business in sheep fattening and uh, to collectively they produce about 400, 4,000 rams in three rounds of fattening and we've trained industry association uh, from eight countries in uh, East Africa. So talking about the poultry technology, poultry outreach material, uh, generally when you speak of poultry production, you have sub-technologies. Uh, this include vaccination and healthcare, feeding and water management, heating and lighting, the housing, the spacing, biosecurity, management, etc., etc. So together with FARA and AFAS, we're developing outreach training materials, which will be uh, made available to stakeholders all over the continent so that um, they can uh, use these materials as training tools to support their work with farmers. Uh, the structure of a typical material is as shown. You see for one module, so each of these modules has sections within the training materials. It has the guide for users, um, target audience, the assumption that is made, a brief background of that, the rationale for producing it, what were the development objectives and the learning content, the actual technical component of the uh, training material. It has a pre-evaluation uh, section and some learning output and outcomes and evaluation of what 
participants learn after the training. So I wouldn't be going into the details of this um, outreach material, but it is being developed as I mentioned. So which technology have we chosen with the potential for commercialization? So the one we've chosen to talk about today is the mother brooder unit. What's a mother brooder unit? It refers to a period, either a house or a, a, a space in which day old chicks are reared for approximately 25 to 30 days after they have been hatched in a commercial uh, hatchery. We're looking at a, a sector of the poultry value chain which has the greatest risk for new entrants for people who are new to poultry. And we are talking of improved chickens, not local traditional chickens. Because for local traditional chickens, the mother hen will take charge of that responsibility. But if we are thinking of scaling, if we are thinking of producing food for millions and millions of people, in the continent all over the world, we are looking at a transition from the traditional backyard poultry production system into an improved system or a hybrid of the two so that this can be combined and uh, used for more improved production practice. So looking at the broader unit, we are focusing only on vaccination. Uh, for the model, but I will speak generally about the broader practice. So the learning objective uh, for the Tambo. Tambo. brooding and um, vaccination is to enable extension workers who are using this training Abra. material Abra. to Abra. list Abra. the various, to teach participants to identify the types of poultry vaccines that are used during chicks brooding, to understand the ages at which these vaccines are required, to identify the various vaccine regimes and how they should be used, and explain or understand the impact of vaccination on disease prevention and the general poultry practice. Here on the table beside, you can see the different types of vaccines, the days of life of chicken, when they can be used. The idea is not to get individual farmers to administer these vaccines because in every country, vaccine administration to animals is guided by regulations and uh, poultry producers should understand these regulations and where they need to find the experts to deliver the vaccine. Next slide. So by way of um, just quickly running through the entire brooding process, we know that there are different aspects of it uh, other than the vaccination. Vaccination is just one uh, element of uh, brooding. So here are some tips for anyone intending to commercialize improved or hybrid chickens. They must get their day old chicks from reputable hatcheries. This is very, very important. Otherwise, they risk losing their money and losing the chickens. Understand the vaccination regimes, the different types of vaccines, build their capacity, skills, and attitude the poultry enterprise is not a walk in the park. It's not a picnic. It's a very technical uh, technology <clears throat> that um, needs to be understood. And I encourage anyone wanting to start to understand what is involved. Fortunately, the knowledge to do it is very much available and anyone can, who is interested, and ready for the work and go into it. So what kind of food also for the feed? I would say for improved chickens, use commercially formulated feeds. 
this is important, use the right equipment and understand what is involved. The scaling of a technology is not just the technology itself. There are various enabling environment that needs to accompany the technology to make it to work. And I have tried to capture some of this in this uh, slide. So the technology itself is there. The farmers and users need to be aware of it. There must be a business case for that technology. In other words, the technology should be capable of being translated into a commercial money-making business. If there's no business case, young people will not do it, farmers will not do it well. Uh, there's a value chain. So the value chain comprises the technology itself, the production, the management, the marketing, the stakeholder here. engagement, etc. Access Sorry to finance. So those are the elements of the uh, scaling. The business opportunity that has been identified in the value chain uh, for poultry includes hatchery production, advisory services, broiler and layer production, a value addition, the animal head feed and the brooder units. So I'll be talking very briefly about two business models, one for Ethiopia and the other for Nigeria. For Ethiopia, I'll be picking on Ethio Chicken, a private uh, company, partly owned by a private company and the Ethiopian government. They have a breeder and a hatchery farm. They import their DO chicks from France, which is Sasso. This is a highly tropicalized breed. And after the brooding stage, this particular breed can grow conveniently in an extensive system. Uh, they can scavenge, pick food, and still attain higher productivity compared with um, traditional chickens. They have about 3,500 uh, outgrowers, specially trained people, each of them raising between 2,000 to 5,000 day old chicks. They brew them about four to six weeks and then sell them to other farmers who can either rear them as an under extensive system or semi-intensive uh, systems. The layers, the performance of these chickens are much higher than the local chickens. The model as currently practiced in Nigeria involves two main breeds. These are the Noila, uh, which is a, an improved local breed of chicken. They have distributors in all 36 states of the country. And in the southern part of the country, in six states, they are promoting the Funab Alpha. As part of the scaling and commercialization process, they have registered about 60 cooperatives and uh, other value chain actors are involved such as the Smallholder Poultry Forum. Next slide. The value addition and offtake has involved the registration of a private company in Nigeria. That private company is known as Bidelium. You can see their product on display. Uh, Ethio Chicken itself uh, you know, conducts their business throughout the entire value chain. They not only supply the chickens, they supply feed, they give training, they do some vaccination, and they train farmers on marketing and processing. The compact has also uh, trained some youths on this aspect of uh, commercializing poultry. In this picture here, you see some youths being trained on uh, processing. So the lessons we've learned uh, undertaking these activities, uh, we recognize the multiplicity of actors at different levels, multi-stakeholder alliances, both vertical and horizontal. They all go together, they work hand in hand to achieve a long-term sustainability. There are drivers in all the sectors of the value chain. The technology itself, the scientists who have developed the technologies, the commercialization model, the research institutes, champion farmers, the private sector especially, and the market, communities, youths and women 
who are involved in the technology. And uh, there's need for incentives in all sectors. Um, the competitors. So at this point, I would like to hand over to my colleague who will uh, share the success of okay. one of the beneficiaries of the technologies. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Samuel, for your very interesting presentation, which you have already highlighted what you have done at the livestock sector and also narrowed down to the potential technology which could be uh, moved to our this commercialization. That's very interesting. And we have seen also the, uh, the business model which you have used and in different countries, 